It's got a very official tone to it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I'm just very interested in in your your reaction. What to the question? Does jury thinking have any relationship to the the problem of democracy as you're seeing it? And, is the problem that you're seeing in Poland the same problem that we're seeing in the United States? Is, is, is this all a matter of right wing against left wing, against authoritarianism, against democracy? Is, is, that, is, is that just a universal theme? That's, that's a really great question. I think, first of all, <clears throat> I understand perfectly well and I think it's a very good reaction that you said you have the once you know once judicial system is out of control there is not much we can do within jury thinking to to combat that but I think the whole process is very long the takeover itself is like boiling the frog for years you know, you know it's, it's bit by bit and in this sense I think that it is valuable to think of the institutions of law and to try to accommodate to already failing system because this is what is happening in Poland. Many, many judicial institutions, many judges, many courts will act actively resist and will stick to the letter of law as they think it is and as it is. Uh, and from this point of view, it's, 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 it's probably not a zero one. It's not binary that, you know, once you destroyed one institution, everything collapses. It's actually a whole process. And from this point of view, I think it is valuable to, to actively seek into what is happening to failing democracies when, when some institutions are failing, but not all. Uh, regarding whether this is a process that is happening in the United States, I do not feel comfortable commenting on, on specifics. I have not been there for a while and I'm, you know, I, 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 I do not live there, but I think that overarching theme is maybe, I'm not sure if it's right wing versus left wing. I would say most of the manifestations would be right or left. But in Poland, the right wing would be very pro social spending, for example. So they will be for a lot of public services. They will be for, well, pretty much like, like the, uh, the social nationalists used to be. So in a way, uh, it's octagonal to, to the traditional right-wing division in the United States. But I think the overarching theme would be anti-intellectualism, combining science, combining research. And I think I, I find it really interesting that lots of these movements out of the blue, out of their own interest actually, they're resisting vaccination efforts. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's, it's, it's in their best interest to support it because the voters will be disappointed in the end. But nevertheless, they are still following those sentiments. So I think there's like something deeper going on. And it, it's, it's a little farther than those right wing divisions. Do you think racism is at the core of it? In Poland, I don't think it is. In Poland, we are extremely homogeneous nation. I think I, I saw a person of color I, when I was already an adult. It's racism uh, as we understand it in the United States is not a thing here. Although Polish people will be very anti-Semitic. We do not have any Jews, but we have anti-Semites, which is ironic, but uh, yeah, traditionally Poland is definitely anti-Semitic. Is what's happening in Poland in any way related to Nazism? The way I understand the, what happened in Nazi Germany is pretty much following the same tracks, sure. Yeah, I, I would say, again, it's deeply ironic and weird that we, you know, we're a nation that suffered severely during the Second World War, but I think while the Germans actually reflected on it and they, you know, they drew a lesson, we didn't. So in a way, Poland is following those tracks. 
Hmm. It's just curious to me that if you oppose democracy with authoritarianism, then one can imagine asking what's at the core of authoritarianism mm. in terms of what is the fear of democracy and vice versa. You mean and besides the, the, the drive to power and perpetuating your, your empowerment in the system? Hmm. Well, that's a great question. That, that one wonders whether it's, would it ever be, would it ever be imaginable to eliminate authoritarianism? Hmm. Yeah. And vice versa. Well, I think vice versa, it's, it's definitely possible. We know that democracy can be eliminated. Uh, but yeah, I wonder because it's, it's a, an excellent question because traditionally the, the safeguards were in the legal system and a lot of institutions in the democratic systems are relying on the letter of law. But uh, if you're just bold enough, if you have the media and you're saying, no, the law does not say that actually, you know, we're, we're following the letter of law and it, it's actually this, this double speak what they're using. It's extremely twisted what they will be telling us in the international in media we yeah we you know we're lawful we're just trying to follow the letter of law let's listen to what the supreme court says and of course the supreme court is their own people uh so yeah it's it's troubling and i'm wondering if there are what would be the social sphere that could be except for of course organized violence and protests because you know if if we were able to get hundreds of thousands of people in protest in the streets, this probably would change the system, but it's very difficult to mobilize people if you're, if they're content because you know, they're, they're not upset. I mean, nothing is changing dramatically step by step. And also all the time there's a minority that you can blame. It will be LGBT, it will be women, a number of, a number of groups that are particularly fitting this image and will, that will be not able to 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 push back strong enough. I I do not I, I honestly do not know. I think you you're the person best positioned to to tell me what would be the, the institution or or sphere technology that could help. Well, I I must say that my parochialism started with the university classroom. How could one go about thinking in terms of establishing an environment ideal for discourse, at least within civil bounds, at least at, at least at least to a point where a university preserves an environment for free thought amongst students, and that kind of worked me out into thinking in jury terms. And it's from there that I came into contact with your wider dimension, saying, well, what does your jury thinking have to do with international? And that reflects back to me specifically with the kind of, I mean, this is the hammer I have in my hand. What does jury thinking have to do with international as an affirmative question rather than as a skeptical question? Is there a role for jury thinking anywhere in the picture of Polish thinking? But what is the role of jury in the Polish balance of powers amongst executive, legislative, judicial, and we the people? 
what I really love about your idea, and I think it's transformative and it's really great, and I hope it will happen, is that it sort of allows for, first of all, for dispassionate, ego-free dispute of ideas, discussion of ideas. And second of all, it allows for discussing ideas until they are dissected to, to arguments. We can actually all agree that this is the line of thought coming from this statement. So we can spend time, in other ways, we can spend time discussing. And ego-free, dispassionate discussion at length until, until the issue is resolved is extremely rare. I think in media, especially, the media is, first of all, it's antagonized. If, even before the social media, it was driven by short, brilliant, snappy, not necessarily accurate responses. And also very ego-driven because, you know, this is how people build their supporter base. And especially so social media now, of course, aggravated, exacerbated to the, to the huge extent. But with what I saw in your project, and I think it's absolutely marvelous, is that it takes a little bit of ego apart because, you know, you're anonymous. And, and it takes, takes the time factor apart as well because, you know, we can continue until we reach a consensus. And this is, uh, in, in Wikimedia, this is, to some extent it works, but it's not perfect, but people are also pseudomized and also trying to reach a consensus. And I think what is phenomenal is that once you're not trying to fight for your ego, once you're not trying to fight to prove that you're right, as you've, as you've shown a number of times in, uh, in, in the barrel space, it's an entirely different conversation. And what I see as huge advantages in student context and also jury, jury thinking context is also super valuable when we're trying to evaluate ideas elsewhere. I would, I'm, I'm thinking uh, a large communities decision making, municipalities, but also at some level, bigger discussions, even with vaccinations. What is happening on Facebook is short exchanges of people snapping out at each other and entering a discourse in which we, 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 could, we could define very clearly what we agree upon, what are the methods that we will agree upon reaching a conclusion. And it's still defined if we have different systems there and people who do not believe in vaccinations can also have different assumptions, but at least they will realize these are assumptions rather than conclusions. And I think it's brilliant that you, you can do this within your, within your idea. So I, I think it's, it's far reaching. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope, I'm hopeful for it. I'm, it's, it's at its incipient stage. Uh, it's interesting to me that this same uh, kind of, of reaction that you've offered me uh, I've also received in a somewhat different way from MIT hmm. on the question of, well, what, what does an engineering school have by way of relationship to this jury question? And so I'm speaking with Sarah later in the day and uh, really hoping that I get as articulate a response and helpful responses you've offered. It's really very good. Thanks, I mean, fingers crossed. And if there's anything I can do, I'll be really super excited because I think it's a marvelous project. I think, you know, we should think big. This will be the next best thing since Wikipedia and Facebook. So 